men age differently than Ugh, women, yeah. right? We all know that. We've mm-hmm. heard the stories. And, you know, they I actually think... age the exact same way as women. <laughs> that's what I've heard. Society yeah. just values the yeah. aging well, in different ways. I mean, right? but that's also like, you know, literally just a few weeks ago, I had some grown man comment on one of my pictures on Instagram being like, you dress sloppy. And I, it was an oversized blazer. <laughs> Welcome to The Scaries, brought to you by Racer Co. I'm Sky, And I'm Talitha. We are proudly broadcasting from Treaty 4 territory and the homeland of the Métis. In each episode, we tackle the alarming, inconceivable, questionable, shocking, and scary statistics relating to, impacting, and intervening with the lives of women and girls worldwide. You'll hear the scary truth, take away tools and tips, and learn about what you can do about it. The Scaries is an opportunity to raise awareness, share resources, and use our voices as women and supporters of women to make real change. We'd also like to note that the views expressed on this podcast are solely our own and um, just for entertainment purposes only, and we could be sharing some content that could be triggering to you, so listen with caution. As straight, cisgender, white, able-bodied settler women, we are very aware of the privilege that we have, and we would like to use this platform to spread awareness about the scary reality that women from around the world face in different life situations. Oh, why? Because sometimes nothing is scarier than being a woman. Scary Spam, welcome back to another episode of Scary But Real Life Statistics of Things Happening to Women and Girls All Over the World mm. and Right Here in Your Own Backyard. Today, we'll be talking about the very prominent real issue of gender discrimination, bias, and inequity that still is very alive and well for women who work in the media industry. More and more, we're seeing headlines, tweets, documentaries cropping up showcasing <laughs> yeah, women working in media and journalism who are finding the courage and solidarity to stand up and speak up against the verbal abuse of online trolls, newsroom sexual harassment claims, and much, much more. All because of the significantly different and disproportionate expectations for women and men working in media. So if you've seen the newer movie Blonde, which I think is on Netflix or maybe Amazon Prime, mm. you'll know about Gretchen Carlson and Megyn Kelly, who were former Fox mm. News anchors. Many, many sexual harassment lawsuits yeah. in that uh, documentary and kind of remake. Charlie's there on uh, Nicole Kidman are in it. You can't miss it. It's great. <laughs> uh, but yeah, very real stories and things that happened uh, against former news CEO, Fox News CEO, Roger Ailes, uh, that brought national attention to the workplace harassment. I believe this was like early 2000s. Yeah, like maybe it's like mid in our lifetime. Yeah, yeah. totally. Uh, pretty recent. There was also Maria Ressa, co founder and CEO of the Philippine news website Rappler and Nobel Priest. Peace Prize winner mm. has openly shared her experiences facing gendered online abuse as a journalist fighting for press freedom. And of course, Lisa LaFlem, we can't forget about her, former yes. chief anchor for CTV National News, who faced significant age and gender discrimination when she decided to let her hair grow gray. Oh, like uh, the travesty. Oh, man. Oh, uh, my. How yeah. dare. And it, I mean, it eventually led to her controversial, but we know the truth, yeah. uh, departure from the network in 2022. Yeah. So these women and so many more have not only confronted discrimination, but also inspired industry wide awareness and reforms to support women in journalism. And today we're so, so very grateful Mm -hmm. to have one of these courageous women, Sabine Ahmed, who's currently a weather and community anchor with CTV News and an in-game host for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, who is here and she is working in our city to reshape the media industry for the better here in her hometown with us today. So she'll be on the pod and stay tuned for a really fun conversation with her. Yeah, she's so great. Yeah. As always, though, first, let's set the stage for this issue by sharing the sheer numbers and we've got news for you see what we did there (laughs) it's not sunshine and rainbows like it never is on this podcast Mm -hmm. let's be honest Mm -hmm. underrepresentation of women is one of the biggest glaring problems that we've been facing since mainstream media began the fact is all around the world women are far less likely than men to be seen i mean again in every aspect of the world but specifically Mm -hmm. in media So as subjects of stories, women only appear in a quarter of television, radio, and print news. 
in a 2015 report, women made up a mere 19% of experts featured in news stories and 37% of reporters telling stories globally. More recently, however, there has been a positive stride for increasing representation of women in media. A 2019 study found that women make up 41% of 41.7% of new U.S. newsrooms. So that's like, I mean, we're almost half. That's pretty mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. Additionally, studies conducted by the International Women's Media Foundation of Canadian News Companies, big name, found that women made up 45.5% of senior level positions in journalism. Right. So that's great. Mm-hmm. This number, however, and sadly, not surprisingly, drops quite drastically when it comes to women in CEO and top level management positions, with only 39.4% in Canada showing that women are hitting that classic glass ceiling. Mm -hmm. Even though women make up 58% of junior level writers as they become more senior in their jobs, this number falls, showing how top level employment is a male dominated tier. Again, like in everything. Mm -hmm. This glass ceiling is found internationally as well. Only 23% of media outlets in the UK, the US, Brazil, Japan, and Germany have a female editor-in-chief. A 2020 study suggested some positive trends. At early tenures, promotion rates for women exceed those for men. Mm -hmm. And HR respondents in the media industry said that their companies have committed to achieving greater gender parity. I mean, commitment and action, different things. But 93, 93% said it was a priority within the organization. So on the whole, while women make up 49% of the total workforce in media and entertainment industry, just like in journalism, they remain concentrated in entry-level positions. Hmm. Of course. Yep. Always. Uh, same old song we hear <laughs> in so many, we discuss in so many different areas throughout our yeah. podcast episodes, just you know same thing different pile uh but there are some positive silver linings we're we're hearing and we're seeing yeah interestingly though in the media world women's representation on and off screen has a significant ripple effect to the probability of how many women get a seat at the table in general Mm. so the more you see the more you can be or the more that are you know inspired to do the same we also see the inclusion of women as the subject matter experts reported in the media represented at much lower rates yeah so kind of like that experts point you made at the beginning yes exactly so we might be working behind the scenes which it seems we almost are to the half half amount per 50 percent almost most, but are we being shown? Are we being noted? Are we being yeah. recognized as the leaders of the faces? Not yeah. necessarily. So a 2021 report conducted by Global Monitoring Media Project found that women only make up 36% of sources quoted or interviewed in North American news outlets. Furthermore, women make up just 38% of experts featured in news stories and 43% of reporters telling stories globally. Significant improvements from the last GMMP report in 2015 were made, but were still under half in each case. Similarly, a 2019 study found that 37% of bylines in news around the world were women, were from women, while a survey of Canadian news found that just 29% of sources quoted in print and broadcast news are women. CBC News has the highest number of women quoted at 36%, while the National Post has the fewest at 22%. Mm. So BBC News is one news outlet that has been committed to changing this with their 50-50 project. Great. And the goal of this project is to increase female representation in the media. They were able to, in just four months, increase their on-air female contributors contributors from 39% to 50%. Aye. Which I feel like shouldn't be a hard thing. Like, not you're the one in thing. charge of who's uh, who you're you know, interviewing and what's being done. So yeah. like that, in just four months, you can easily do that. So while some news shows have little control over the newsmakers featured in the current events, obviously you have to say what's, you know, cover what's happening in current and you don't have control over all of that. But you can make an intentional effort. Women still make up half the population. So there should be some leeway there (laughs) Um, that uh, that. Yeah. So there is, you know, there is a little bit of lack of control there. But overall, we can control the contributors, experts and reporters that we turn to every day and make that a, a mindful effort to do that. Yeah. 
there's actually like a ton of organizations too. I remember just, I think we encountered somebody from one of them. Um, and so then I was, just was looking it up because I couldn't remember the exact name um, and I can't remember the exact name. However, there are many organizations where like one is called informedopinions.org and you can literally just go find an expert on different things that are women, oh. um, like women experts in that area or women in view. And then there's another one called media experts. So like, I remember that. Yeah, I can't remember where I we think, met them, but I think Alyssa, did Alyssa Cooper Benson give us that list. When Maybe we first met with her. Yes. Like, right. When we started 2020, to raise her. 2019. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like she, cause we were interviewing, we were asking around about, should we start this thing who should we have involved yeah. and i feel like she gave us a list or some link yeah i feel like it was her because it I kind must of have like been her can see this in my brain yeah and yeah, yeah like here's all the people you should so consider. like it's not like it's hard it's just a little bit of work and so like you have to just be able to and want to put the work in it's just to being intentional yes, yeah don't, exactly don't let's not be lazy like, yeah <laughs> be, make an intentional effort to yeah. show more representation of the world and the people living in it exactly so another stat we found noted that women reporters are only responsible for 37% of stories. Interesting. Oh, so and like what, the assignments that they get. Yes. yes. So when women have a seat at the table, they're more likely to advocate for other women in stories that feature women. Hmm. Okay. The lack of representation, though, in newsrooms and media companies means that women receive fewer opportunities to share the stories of other women and the issues that impact their lives makes sense it's this ripple effect yes. women journalists are also twice as likely to challenge gender st stereotypes in their reporting than male journalists so overall the lack of representation of women creates less women to come into those roles and want to go into those areas and we'll talk more about this uh with sabine yeah and because there's less women in those high level senior level roles we're not seeing as many women cover. We're not seeing as many issues that impact yeah. women cover. We're not seeing it as many women and stereotypes being a uh, challenge. So yes. it all is a very much of a ripple effect. Whereas if we get that balance, we'll start to see some change. Yeah. So, I mean, ideally. Yeah. Well, let's, let's that's, hope. That's I mean. the dream. This just goes to show that what men and women experience working in the media is obviously very different, which leads to another key injustice we wanted, uh, we discovered, which is that men and women are faced very, have faced very different standards that end up creating limited opportunities for the advancement of women. So a study conducted by McKinsey and company on shattering the glass screen, the glass ceiling, the glass wall, the whatever it is in media and telecommunications uncovered that it's no secret that women working in media and entertainment are well aware of the odds are stacked against them mm. and the numbers back them up. So while nearly 60% of mass communications graduates are women, by the time they climb the corporate ladder to senior management, less than 30% make it to the C-suite. Hmm. This isn't just bad luck. Nearly half of women in the industry say that they are judged by different standards than men, making it harder to rise through the ranks. In fact, a whopping 27% of women believe they've missed out on promotions or raises because of their gender compared to just 7% of men. It's a steep climb and the further up women go, the more rungs of opportunity disappear. Even worse, microaggressions, those subtle but damaging slights or actions, like being interrupted, talked over, or even having your expertise questioned, are rampant in media and entertainment. Women in this industry experience more of these undermining behaviors than in nearly every other sector, wow. and women of color bear the brunt of it. Of course. Of course, those intersectionalities. Mm -hmm. This kind of bias isn't just annoying. Of course, it's annoying, but it's more than that. Mm -hmm. It chips away at confidence and keeps women from advancing. Meanwhile, what with men still making up 80% of the C-suite in media, many don't even recognize these problems, which makes it even harder to create meaningful change. Like they're just blind to it. Mm -hmm. So while women may get their foot in the door, they're still waiting for it to fully open. Man. Yeah. yeah. I mean, all rings true. Yep. <laughs> Not surprising anymore to me. None of this. No, I know. We're like, hey, yeah, classic. Yep. Yeah, absolutely classic. And last but not least, women face a much higher likelihood of harassment and verbal attacks than men. Wonderful. 
Yeah. So, and we, we heard this in, you know, whether or not you're behind the, the camera or in front of it, you know, you're a notable figure, whether you're, yeah. you know, in the C-suite or you're the mayor or you're yeah. in politics, right? We, le- we keep hearing this theme about women being faced with these trolls and internet stalkers and scary people just hating on them more than men. Yeah. And so the research from MFRR in Europe highlights the disturbing trend that women journalists are facing way more verbal attacks than their male colleagues. To put this in perspective, 31% of attacks on male journalists were verbal, but for women, that number jumps to a staggering 42.7%. Oh. And it's not just about the nasty comments. Smear campaigns have become a powerful weapon used oh, to yeah. silence women in journalism, especially when they're reporting on hot button issues during election times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you can imagine what uh, our old friends to the South, our friend, our one friend, we don't have, we're not friends with the other one. That I was running, <laughs> um, was Just one with. friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The digital world has only made things worse. Honestly, uh, when it comes to this, online harassment is running rampant uh-huh. with 24.6% of the attacks on women journalists happening online nearly double that of men who only face 12.5%. So these online abuse attacks take many forms from intimidation to insults, for bullying to more sinister things like sexual harassment and threats and stalking. And I'm sorry to say that it gets even darker. There oh. have been direct threats to the safety of these women and their families. So a thing called doxing, which we have to look yeah. up because I didn't know what that was. Nope. This is the act of revealing personal information about someone online without their consent. So that's something that happens regularly to women uh, in the in the media. There's also rape threats, death threats, yeah. like doxing is, is like posting someone's like personal phone number or yes. like address yes. or like anything. Yeah, it's not. I think it's technically like illegal. Like yeah, I think like it's that's yeah, just so scary. In 2023 alone, women journalists were hit with at least 20 rape or death threats. And guess oh. what? 60% of those happened online. Of course, people can do a lot more behind the screen, behind yeah. the, those keyboard warriors. They, yeah, I'm say they feel a lot more confident. Mm-hmm. But when it comes, like, I think we even heard this in our episode with the mayor of Regina and that, you know, people say a lot online, but when it comes to in person, they won't even mention a word. Like, they'll no. never say it to you, your face. No. Which is like, ugh. Grow. Just, yeah, yeah. Like, grow a pair of ovaries. Yeah. Right? <laughs> The positive is that organizations like Article 19 Europe are stepping up and analyzing the freedom of expression implications of these online attacks Mm -hmm. and pushing for investigations, especially in countries like Spain, where the problem is very rampant. The bottom line is these attacks are designed to scare women into silence, to push them out of the public space. That's it. But understanding what's happening and why if this is happening is crucial. And that's what we're doing today. Mm-hmm. We need to stand up for our women in journalism so that they can continue to exercise the right to freedom of expression and continue to represent yes. a huge p- portion of our population. Yeah. I mean, like, Jeez. I think even just we know that, like, and of course we know this, but we know that when like women speak on different topics. That's why you have different experts because they ha- bring something different to the table. Totally. They, they view have different experiences. Yes. And it's not just women and men, like just people from different backgrounds, exactly. different walks of life, different lived experiences. Like let's get out of this, like this group think that's yeah. been leading our country and our cities and everything for years. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you've got that right. That's mm-hmm. exactly what we're talking about today. Mm-hmm. So with all of that new awareness that we all have about these special kind of health, so many women in the media have to face just to simply do their job. Let's dive more into the details, experiences, and stories of one amazingly talented journalist from our hometown and one of our friends, Sabine Ahmed. Welcome, Sabine. Let me tell you a little about this wonderful person that we have with (laughs) us today. So Sabine is a natural storyteller who has found her passion in radio, television, public speaking, and event hosting. With nearly 20 years of experience in front of the camera and microphone, she doesn't look a day over 20. I'll tell you that right now. Right? (laughs) How? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) She brings an unmatched energy and professionalism to every project she touches, elevating it to world-class standards. Her combination of youthful enthusiasm and the seasoned grace of a veteran has made her a standout in her field. And yes, I will attest to that as well. Mm -hmm. Beyond her work with CTV Virginia, where she is currently, Sabine has collaborated with organizations such as the Saskatchewan Rush, Rough Riders Football Club, 
the Canadian Football League, and the City of Regina, to mm. name a few. She's also deeply committed to her community, giving her time to support mental health and women's initiatives throughout the province, including Razor. So thank you, mm-hmm. Sophia. Thank, thank you. you. That always feel I didn't write that, but <laughs> <laughs> so it feels weird hearing it. And then that 20 year thing. I know you're like, I read it and I was like, whoa, she's, I'm not even old enough. No one is old enough to be working that long. You started when you were born, right? I started when I was five. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so as always, we start with some rapid fire questions to like get the juices flowing, but they're never very rapid and they're normally quite deep. So (laughs) sorry in advance. (laughs) Um, okay. So first question is if you could give one gift to all women, what would it be? Confidence. Mm. quick on the shoot there but then so, and I think like what I've noticed and I I'm I'm sure I'm not the only one like I just the confidence to not feel threatened by other women uh, right like like we all have a space yeah like there's space for all of us and not to feel um yeah less than and not to feel threatened by other women who may be in the same industry or field as you and just like tunnel vision and feel good that you you have something that little spark or something different and just Mm -hmm. believe in yourself and have that confidence that you can go as far as the person right next to you Mm -hmm. I love that asterisk on it because yeah Yeah. it's like you can have confidence but it's also like let's go together yeah yeah Yeah. like uh, obviously the difference between confidence and arrogance yeah (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) right Mm -hmm. but yeah like I think there's I think there's space for if you're moving somewhere like moving in or elevating somewhere like i will be your biggest cheerleader but then at the same time like you you know you hit a certain level and you bring the rest of us with you yeah right kind of thing it's not that expectation but it would be nice to it would be nice for sure yeah like vision of like a mother figure bringing every all of us together anyway. mother goose <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> I went sideways there. <laughs> um okay next question is what is the best piece of advice that you've ever received uh, or like a couple pieces or like a top of mind because mm-hmm. ever is like very daunting but i mean m- my dad he he's passed uh mm-hmm. he passed away four years ago but he uh, he He always, I would always bring up something that I was hesitant about or worried about. (laughs) Very simple and almost flippant right now, but who cares? Oh, like who cares if someone's going to say that about you? Who cares? And I think now in my forties, I get it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Even when I turned 40, I didn't get it. But now like inching closer into mid forties, I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. Who cares what anyone else is going to say? If I, who cares if I'm switching jobs and you touched on some of them, but uh, my <laughs> resume is long. So like, I think there was always that hesitation of people are going to judge people. You know, someone's going to say, I couldn't hack it in this job. So she, mm-hmm. she just, she can't stay in one job and who cares? Yeah. Who cares? And, again, it's, I'm in my own world. Like yeah. I'm in my bubble doing my thing. And for a while I did have, you know, I told friends, I'm like, you're paying your bills. They aren't right. Like if yeah. your mortgage is paid, you're, you, you're feeding yourself. You're good. Why are we worried? Yeah. And it took a long time for me to get to who cares, but that, that, and my therapist <laughs> telling God me, bless therapy, honestly, <laughs> yeah. like everyone, even yeah. if you think you're good, just go just talk to do it. Therapist. Just do it. Her yeah. big one for me was fact versus feeling. Mm. because oh. I think it goes back to when I was coming back into media uh just over a year ago I was terrified yeah. I did not I was so scared what are people going to say when they see me on air again she's too old she's she looks different she all these things and my therapist said are these facts or are these feelings yeah. like are you is there concrete proof and evidence that this is or is this just something you're feeling and is there mm-hmm. a way you can actually prove this your storytelling or, yeah yeah right yeah. like and so i think those are those two i'm sure there's more in there somewhere no that i like that up, but those are two. they go hand in hand like yeah. your first yeah. answer right confidence yeah. it all goes yeah. back to that right yeah yeah and rupaul says if they ain't paying your bills then pay them no mind <laughs> there you go. That's, I'm like, yeah yeah actually though yeah very true. true again it takes a long time to get there though mm-hmm it yeah. does. And then people are like, where do you get your confidence from? Or like, where and it's I'm like, it. oh, God, yeah, <laughs> literally <laughs> that. Well, yeah, it's a lot of a lot of self-work and therapy oh, for all, some of us. Anyways. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Last question is, what is your scary? <laughs> what? Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. just again, we said rapid fire, nice yeah. and easy breezy. 
yeah but i think this actually goes back to that just like the faking it imposter syndrome mm. is a big one for me like but i think with that is also like i'm constantly wondering about what's next mm. you know i've um like I think there's always room for grow and improving and, and I mean, look what you guys are doing. You know, there's always things to expand and, and try new things and different things. And I just noticed the wicked book. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, big, we're big fans. Yeah. Yeah. Big fans over here. Um, yeah. And I think that is one thing that's just a pit in my stomach because I mean, the world of media is always changing and we hear about it daily. And yeah. that I think that was one of my hesitations about going back is like how long, how long am I going to be there? I yeah. don't, you know, and I think for me now, again, being in your forties, it's like, if this all goes away, what's next? What can I do? And I think a lot of that also, like, I, that's where my mind, my, my therapist always says that I could probably write novels. Cause like, then I just, and that's what keeps me up at night. It's the scaries where I'm like, okay, but now, so I think I could do this, but do people think I have value in that? And like, what do people think I'm worth? And then if I, and so it's just a, yeah. spiral Master wheel yes. of yeah and then that going back to the imposter syndrome of like can I like can I do that mm -hmm. am I or am I faking it like people think I can even coming on here I was like <laughs> I I have nothing to say <laughs> uh absolutely no you talk yeah. for a living I'm sure yeah. you've got lots yeah. to say and you've you've had some good stories I wow. know that mm -hmm. so yeah <laughs> Well, thank you yeah. for being here. Okay, so that mm. wraps up our rapid fire. <laughs> yeah. Short <Sorry>. segment. <laughs> 20 years later. <laughs> um, we're going to go into like a few different sections. Mm -hmm. so we're going to start with like your personal journey and mm. experiences in media. And then, you know, we'll okay. go from there. So I'll pass it over to Sky. Sure. So tell us about your journey into journalism and media and what brought you there, what drew you there and why you stay. I mean, I think I've always, as far back as I can remember as a kid, wanted to be some sort of storyteller. I liked the whole thought of interviewing people, but I was big in the writing side of things. Like I would write fake magazines about the new kids on the block oh. and aging myself. Aww. But Incredible. Yeah. Like, you know, the teeny bop magazines, yep. like, but I wrote my own yep. and cut out the pictures from the teeny bop. And <laughs> I love and have that. a photographer, you guys. Yeah. Um, but then that, you know, I, would record radio programs with my brother on his silver ghetto blaster complete Ooh. with commercials like uh oh, oh better gosh. get mako yeah oh my god oh yeah i wish we had those tapes i'm sure maybe they are hidden somewhere but i've it's always that's always been an interest and joy yeah. for me um but i never really like i never i didn't see anyone like me on tv mm -hmm. so i th i think it was just kind of i like doing it but you know, going through school, I never really had an idea of what I wanted to do until I got into high school. And there was a journalism class that I got to take, but it really didn't, it was more a yearbook. You right. know, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then once I got into university, I did an English degree because writing again was all I kept thinking I wanted to do. And then when I got into the journalism school, I still thought I was going to do magazine writing. Like I, the thought, believe it or not, was never to be in front of a camera. Yeah. It was, I always wanted to write. Hmm. I wanted to be a writer. And then somehow. <laughs> here she is. And here I am. Yeah. <laughs> my, I mean, like I joked, my resume is long, but when it comes to just the journalism world, after I graduated from J school, I actually moved to Didsbury, Alberta. Okay. A town of back then, like less than 5,000 white retired farmers and mm -hmm. me. <laughs> First experience at a feedlot, which I don't know if you guys know feedlots, but uh -uh. we can talk about it later. But that was an experience. Okay. <laughs> it's where they go and like feed the cows to get big and oh, yeah. needy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. And they were like, Sabine, don't make any comments about like, because I was like, they look so sad. <laughs> like, do they know what's about to happen after? Like, you're yeah. feeding them. Anyway, so, so I was there. I forced myself to stay there a year. I, it was hard. Um, that is hard. It was not you so know, out of your element. Oh my yeah. gosh. Like, and I thought my next move would just gen like cat, like naturally be Calgary and it didn't end up being that way. So I moved back home and I could not get a job anywhere in Regina. I love this city, but at that time, like it was just mm -hmm. hard, right? You don't have the experience. You can't get the job. You don't get the job. You don't have the experience. So, um, my good friend, Morgan Campbell, who's our, uh, provincial anchor now, but she, was had interned at CTV and she was still there. So at the time she was like, we'll talk to the news director. And it was Carl Worth, 
who, you know, greatest um, addition in my world. I he said he didn't have a job for me, and I said, "Well, I'll work for free." Oh, no! And he said, "Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna work you then." <laughs> yeah. And so I was in the newsroom for about three months trying to get experience, but there was just no position opening. So right. And then I moved into the world of communications at SAS Power, and then I went in, and then that's where. I was there for a year and then I moved into Rolco Radio for yeah, a year yeah. or so, then CBC for about two years and then CTV. It's been a journey. It's, so what's yeah. been your favorite part? Like you've done radio, you've done writing, yeah. you've done um, like I, TV. What's what's your passionate area? Honestly, like radio is a lot of fun. Like this whole podcast role, obviously <laughs> back then was not a thing, but yeah, like, yeah. I think it's just people... Yeah, I've been fortunate enough to do some really great interviews on TV, but people, I feel like it's easier for them to open up when there's no camera in their mm -hmm. face, yeah. right? Like, you know, you can have this, but yeah. like, if you're sitting down and there's like a camera person or a camera right in front of your face, like it's a little bit more daunting than just having a yeah. casual conversation. Whereas I think when it's on TV, people feel like there's a certain way you have to sit and, and, yeah. and radio They're more is like, just, yeah, like yeah. filtered almost. Which yes. I mean, I don't, I don't care or do any of that yeah. maybe it's a after experience but when you're you're just a guest I think it's a little bit more difficult for someone to open up when you're under the lights and cameras versus t I think radio is probably one of my more favorite ones mm, yeah I like it. yeah nice I think I was doing a volunteer thing with an organization here in town um and we had an event coming up and we came on to CTV morning mm -hmm. show and you interviewed me mm -hmm. and I was so <laughs> No. nervous and I was like uh, uh, you Which just seem like such a casual well, yeah like, well there's like there's no one in studio right yeah. like it's not a live studio audience but no. I get but I get it's scary it's, yeah. yeah especially well, I mean, for someone who doesn't you're do it all the time for, yeah yeah and then you have like four minutes to like yeah and they're like what are you what are your key messages and <laughs> yeah. I'm like oh god what are my key messages I forget <laughs> anyways but hopefully I, we've come a little bit further than that yes yeah. we've had a couple media appearances <laughs> yes then. yeah yeah Okay, so you talked about Carl and you talked about mm -hmm. Morgan mm -hmm. as like mentors and allies mm -hmm. that you have. Um, who helped? Who else has helped you navigate your your challenges in your career and maybe even specifically like gender related challenges if you face those? Wow, that's a that's a good question. <laughs> um, I just I feel like you know I didn't come from. Um, you know, a family of journalists or media people, you know, I came, my mom, greatest human on earth, superwoman. She, you know, she was a homemaker. She took care of us. And my dad was, uh, worked with the provincial auditor's office. So like numbers, like, yeah. <laughs> like, so I like ventured into this other, like, I'm going to create. <laughs> yeah. And they were like, write numbers? Yeah, or yeah. Well, yeah. and there was a time where my dad was like, you know, let's do a fa go into become an auditor or accountant and, yeah. and we'll do a family thing. I went to one finance class and came out crying. And oh. I was like, I have no idea what happened in there. Yeah, no. It's no. It's not. It's not me. <laughs> no. But, same. you know, I had the support of my mom. Like, even sometimes now, I'll, like, bless my mom. She doesn't always, like, she doesn't always get some of the stuff I'm doing, but she's like, right on Facebook, liking it and yeah. sharing Aww. it and telling. And, and I think sometimes that support alone helps, but uh, you know, um, Richard Brown was, a, a show host on Royal Co when I worked there and, you know, I haven't talked to him in a little while, but he was always someone I went to for advice and, you know, Carl Worth, again, I probably could not say enough good things about his support, how he always pushed and encouraged and you know to this day still like I still keep in touch with him but I think it's it's funny because they're all old white men yeah <laughs> that's good say, like, that's Carl. a refreshing yeah. thing to hear because yeah. you do not hear that often <laughs> yeah, yeah like they're they're old white men um and uh, I mean you know I didn't have a woman of color in media to lean on and be like I don't like I want to be an anchor. Like yeah. how, you know, well, first, I don't even think I want to be an anchor was in my thought process. Right. But, but there was no one of color that was like, you should anchor. You right. would be great at the desk. It was Carl, like saying, you know, we'll have a spot open. You should be on the morning show. We'll, you know, and so, you know, it, it helps to have, you know, these 
white men, (laughs) you know, who are supporting you and and have that experience. But I think for a lot of it, I've kind of just like shoveled and took a step and shoveled. And then that was not, there was a hole there. Let's turn right and keep shoveling. But I mean, also like I've worked with some incredible women who I could talk day and night about, you know, I have a friend, Jenna, who's a director, um, who works in media still. And a lot of my CT, like we're in a book club still, and we still get together once a month and we all, you know, most of them are out of media. Um, but we all still talk and encourage and, and, you know, we've all been in the trenches of what Mm -hmm. the media world was like. Yeah. And so, you know, even when I was like making the decision to come back, I was very hesitant to tell people because they, I was worried, or I guess I thought, you know, people are going to be like, why are you going back? Like almost backwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that wasn't the case. Everyone was so supportive and like, yes, like you need to go back. So can we, can we dive into a little bit of like that, of like going back and the feelings around that? Because like, we know that you were on, you were in the media and then you left and you came back. Like, and then what were the feelings around that? And why do you you think people would be like, what? Well, it's kind of funny because I this is the lesson of never say never. Um, cause I used to think I was never kind of, if I yeah. go back to media, it won't be in Regina. Like I don't think, um, and so I was on the morning show for about four and a half years and I just felt like it was time to leave. And that's where I had, like, I call it my sabbatical. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> where I did dabble in many a things like the city of Regina. I was in the mayor's office for a couple months and it wasn't a fit. I went to real for about two and a half years. I went back to government thinking maybe and yeah was there for a couple months and nope and then went to Regina police service for a year and then I was at stars for about six eight months and then I got the call to come back to CTV so there is a you know I think I mean now I jokingly say to my therapist I might be having an identity crisis but <laughs> I you don't know if you don't try totally yeah. right and when you're in industry something like media it's so you think at the time I don't have any skills to do anything yeah. other than this. And to a lot of us that are in that world, it, like we just, we're like, we just talk in front of a camera. Mm-hmm. Like, but then having that opportunity to be in these other roles, like, wow, I can work to deadlines. Like I can, you know, like all these things I can adjust. Like when you're in the media world, you're a subject matter expert every day. Yeah. Like different, mm-hmm. You know, so when you move into this other world of communications or marketing or PR, whatever the case is, I think you start to, I think that is where I built a lot of my confidence. Cause I was like, wait, there's a lot of other things I can do outside Mm -hmm. of this. Yeah. So when it came to, um, coming back, I had a lot of, (sighs) what is the word? Um, my, so I, yeah, it had been about three years since my dad had passed and in my dad's, you know, my dad always, always thought of it as going back. Mm-hmm. Like, why would you want to go back? You left, you, you know? And so I think I always had that in my thought. And I think also like going back, you just keep thinking you're going backwards. Like I'm setting myself back. Mm, right. Like, how is this a catapult forward? Um, but now I have this toolbox not even a tool belt I have this toolbox that is like overflowing with so much experience so much new knowledge so many new connections and Mm -hmm. so much that moving back into this role it's you know I I always joke that I'm like I just do the weather but it's more than just that because I actually get to connect with the community yeah totally and it's not And I, you know, I commend my co-anchors who have to deliver the hard news because I just, it might snow tomorrow. (laughs) (laughs) That's hard. It is is hard because (laughs) viewers let me know when Uh, they don't like something. But but, control the weather better. (laughs) But I think now I've come back, you know, um, there's that saying of like, when you know better, you do better or you're, you're not starting, you know there's the other one of you're not starting from the bottom, you're starting from experience. And I Mm -hmm. think that's what this opportunity was because coming, returning to CTV was I'm coming back with experience and knowledge and it's not me starting fresh and trying to 
make something of myself because I feel like I've come in as myself. Right. If that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. But there was a lot. Like I did. I yeah. Like it's not easy being a woman in front of a camera. And when you're getting older, your body's changing and all these things. I was terrified. It's not uh, my therapist. <laughs> bless her heart. Because she had to hear a lot about it because I was not in a good space to begin with. I think I was dealing with a lot of, you know, depression from the grief. I, you know, I'd lost my dad. And then about a year and a half later, I lost a younger cousin. And so there was a lot of, I think I just push myself and jump into work that I mm-hmm. just kind of try to. Yeah. Like disassociate. Yeah, almost. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think it all came bubbling up and I was in a really not good place. And I was basically begging God to give me just one spark of joy and then I got a call from my news director and actually it was funny he was like you know I'm looking for someone you know interested in doing weather and I was like weird I don't know anyone and he was like (laughs) no you yeah (laughs) it's you actually that (laughs) I'm wondering (laughs) so yeah so yeah and now I'm back and it just doesn't feel like work yeah that's the best yeah it really is I'm very lucky that's amazing good yeah well so you talked a little bit about your journey of Mm -hmm. moving around Mm -hmm. and I totally relate because I've also moved around a ton yeah and had to get over the fact that like it's not a me problem in all these situations it's actually where I was like it was I didn't fit with those places yeah Mm -hmm. I wasn't fired yeah Uh, you know we moved around because it didn't fit for me and I'm not gonna settle why should we right let's be real we're not we're no longer (laughs) sitting in in companies for 30 years at the same place no we don't have to so weird because there was there was one place in particular I will not say where um that I had people come to me and be like man I wish I could just do what you're doing and just leave Mm -hmm. and I was like do it leave yeah yeah do it but you know you're 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 um kind of tied to the pension or whatever the the thing is so it's like I can't imagine anywhere like for 20 like I've had 20 years I cannot imagine that being a solid 20 years of one place right no which is so weird because I know like like our parents generation did that like my dad worked at one place up until Mm -hmm. retirement like how did you how is that a thing Mm -hmm. yeah and the amount that you grow and the yeah. amount of skills yes. that you and the people you met, yeah. like it just goes to show how many more doors that yes. open for you and yeah. will open for you. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Yeah. anyway, um, just had to share that because I was like, I totally agree. I <laughs> yeah. same, same thing. Um, but when you talked about, you know, um, the feelings of, you know, getting older and how mm-hmm. that would p- portray in mm-hmm. being in the media mm-hmm. and is that um are those other other certain obstacles that you came across in your time before you left that kind of created that triggering response or that trauma for you to not want to go back like was there some t- some type of challenge or issue that happened that um, you'd be willing to share you know i think it's just your i i mean it's your own insecurities mm. right like um i'm not as skinny as i was before or you know again i'm older and i think you just you men age differently than Ugh, women yeah. right we all know that we've mm-hmm. heard the stories and you know they I actually think... age the exact same way as women <laughs> that's what i've heard society yeah. just values the yeah. aging well, in different ways I mean, right? but that's also like you know you hear and read comment like i mean i still like literally just a few weeks ago i had some grown man comment on one of my pictures on instagram being like um you dress sloppy and I, it was an oversized blazer <laughs> you're like first of all <laughs> this is on trend. Trend. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah second of all fortunately i do not dress for the male gaze yeah. like i like and but he wanted me in form fitting and probably know? every woman was texting you saying i love your outfit today. yeah all <laughs> yeah. the time but yeah. i've also had men be like that purple suit you're wearing i yeah. don't know what it is about the purple suit but anyway um <laughs> they like and so you know, knowing that, you know, and prior to that, like I had, you know, and it was, you know, p- viewers, you know, have made comments about she should go back to where she came from. Um, oh my God. You know, but, the, but th- so those, are, I think when you're putting yourself, that's, that's very vulnerable to put yourself in front of a camera and every day presenting as though everything is fine, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. and it's not 
easy. No. And I think that's like goes back to how do you how you're so confident. There's no way, you know, and it's like, OK, but when the commercial is on, I'm not having a good time, mm-hmm. you know, like um, I've had like there's just been lots of comment. And when you know, when I was on the morning show was when we found out my dad had cancer and like the next day I went on air and I wasn't as bubbly and mm-hmm. someone messaged and said, Sabine sure must be having a bad day. She blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, why? Why aren't you allowed to be human? I yeah, but that's right. You're like, like a I caricature think, like, instead. Mm-hmm. It's so I think knowing that those comments come already, I was like, and I, I mean, not that any, but you just we know, not everyone is gonna like you. I'm well yeah. aware of that. Like, and I'm okay with that. I don't. I mean, I don't like every. You know, like, and yeah. not in a rude, disrespectful, hateful way, but just, and so I think like, keyboard warriors. Yeah. And in today's day and age of social media, where it wasn't as big when I first started mm-hmm. in media, there, it's just a different world, right? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. they don't hesitate to let you know if they don't like you or, you know, they want to share a story about you that whether it was true or not, you know, like anything like that can happen. And so I think that was my fear. Like I was developing these, again, my mind anxiety is for sure. And so that was the conversation with where the fact and feelings came with my therapist. Cause she was like, where, like, who, who are you envisioning is saying this? Who's watching the TV saying these things about you looking a certain way or there couldn't they find someone younger or prettier and it was me mm-hmm. yeah you just so, gotta have your dad's voice so yeah who, who cares, cares? <laughs> yeah it's easier said than done but absolutely yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 I find it always so like it's such a weird situation to be in for people who choose to be in the media or mm-hmm. like who want to be a like actor mm-hmm. or a mm-hmm. musician or something and then all of a sudden they're like allowed quote yeah. unquote to just be like destroyed by people yeah. online or yeah. just be picked apart or like have access to all yeah. the time yeah. or anything. Or some like, you know, people are like, well, you like you, you signed made... up for this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, like, no. <laughs> yeah. No. It's a job. I didn't sign yeah. up for hate. I didn't and sign up. Like, I mean, would you but and... I mean, having said that, like I've worked in other jobs where you know, you're behind the scenes, but you're watching social media comments. And I'm like, I wonder at, And this goes back to like when I worked at a call center, like people are calling and saying some really racist things. And I'm like, if you knew. Right. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Would you? And then all of a sudden, and that was even just recently, like you're monitoring social media on some things. And it's like, could this be the person behind me in line at a grocery store? Yeah. And like, Mm -hmm. what, like, are they thinking this about me when you're saying racist stuff? Like, it's just, yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm being very vague on what I'm talking no, about. No, no, but, but yeah, yeah. We'll share as much yeah. or as little. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned a lot of your friends in the media yeah. women yeah. have yeah. left. Is that, yes. is this a common kind of experience that you find? You know what? The re- I feel like, and I, again, I don't want to speak for anyone, mm-hmm. but I, I don't, I don't fit the mold for a lot of women my age, I don't think, but a lot of them got married and had kids mm. and the world of media is not always the easiest to juggle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for moms, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like it might be a little easier for dads, uh, but for moms working in the media and depending on what your, you know, what the hours are and what the, what the, I know childcare is not the easiest these days. And I think it was just a matter of sometimes you just outgrow mm-hmm. and it's not enjoyable anymore. Um, or just the times are changing in media, right? What's newsworthy or what someone wants to report on or anything like that so I think it just it's it's growing and changing and evolving for certain people and you know there's still some I'm sure that miss it but sometimes it just doesn't fit into the other choices you've made fair yeah do you think that um gender discrimination has evolved over your time in the media like from when you, and you talked about a little bit about mm-hmm. like social media specifically mm-hmm. but um and people saying things but in your opinion has that evolved and changed like do you think it's getting worse or maybe getting better or I think it depends on it's different I think it depends like female sports broadcasters I think have a rough time yeah. you know and I am how friends, dare you like yeah. you know and it's, you know, I've done a very tiny little blip on sideline for the rush, 
But that has always been a fear for me too, that I'm like, oh my God, like it's so, I think that has probably been more stressful just because it's a different, you know, I know there's the mansplaining world and there's, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think it's, it's, and I've seen the comments that some of my friends who work in sports have gotten. And I'm like, bro, like, don't you have anything better to do with your time? Oh God, yeah. Like, and so I, again, like 20 years ago, I think it was definitely different. And I, you know, you still hear about the, you know, old boys club that's still, you know, that's still right a thing. Um, I don't feel like I, I mean, I think I've been very fortunate Mm -hmm. um, that I haven't really, I, I can't pinpoint a time or experience where someone felt or made me feel like I wasn't good enough because I was a woman in broadcasting or I wanted to chase a story. Like, again, I've got to interview the prime minister. I got to interview a very high ranking leader in, you know, a religious, uh, religious community. And so I've had those, you know, experiences and it was never a second guess. At least I don't think maybe it could have been, I like behind closed doors, but you know, like you never know, right. Who knows who was fighting for you and who wasn't Mm -hmm. like, I don't, um, you know, I, and I haven't seen it or experienced it firsthand, but I think it's definitely evolving because you see more women in higher roles in the the media world and the industry now. And that wouldn't have been a thing back in. Yeah. I I feel like even like five years ago, like 10 years ago, it's it's definitely different. It's really cool to see that that is evolving and, and growing. And like, why is it immediate response when you see, like even for me still like there's obviously just biases that still exist when like I'm watching can I don't really watch NFL but like if it's on if it's on in the television (laughs) um and I'll like walk by yeah uh and there's like a broad like a female broadcaster like a woman broadcaster or like down like talking and I'm like whoa like wow yeah like Like, and I'm like why is that my reaction that like wow good for her like she's qualified yeah it's still foreign right Mm -hmm. and I think you you know, we've talked about like the, or what well, we haven't talked, but there's the soft news or, you know, like yeah. lifestyle entertainment and, and yeah. all those things. But like, why can't you be on like the front lines of war? Yeah. You know, and you like Christiane Amapour and, and Lise Doucette and, yes. you know, and even Caitlin Collins, like all these people, like they're such strong, badass women. Like if I could be reporting from war, I'd be there in a heartbeat. Okay. Hmm. But I know I could. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I could if anyone would hire me to do it, but like, <laughs> I know the opportunities there because yeah. you see these women because you can see roles, it. Right. Yeah. And back. And like, I think that goes back to me saying when I was younger, like my first woman, <laughs> woman of color on TV. Uh, I don't know if you guys, I, I don't, am I older than you? Uh, yeah. Like a little okay. bit. Yeah. Um, did you ever, or are you familiar with Electric Circus? On oh, Much yeah. Music? Mm-hmm. Do you remember Monica Deol? She was the one of the brown one, VJs. One of the VJs. Yeah. And she, I think she was my first, like, there's brown girl on TV. Wow. And, like, I'm not into electronic music or whatever the heck that, that was. was back so then. random. <laughs> <It> was very <laughs> random. But I would watch because I was yeah. like, look at her. She's so pretty. And she's like interviewing people and, and has she's a doing microphone. It. And, yeah. Yeah. And she's like doing what I do. to see where, again, it's evolved. Yeah, that was music. But now you see all these women reporting from like, you know, riots and war and the sideline of the NFL that it's yeah. a diff. It's definitely evolving. Could it be better? Absolutely. Yeah, mm-hmm. always. Yeah. But to see that growth is it's yeah. so awesome. It's yeah. It's happening. Yeah. Slowly. Slowly. Yeah. yeah. So okay. <laughs> so on the topic of stories, we're oh, getting God. into it. Okay. Do you believe um that there is any type of disproportionate or underreported amount of stories related to gender diversity in the newsroom? So I'm talking about are there more usually stories that are um and it's hard to say whether it's a male dominated mm-hmm. story or a story mm-hmm. about men or there's mm-hmm. more sh- more male experts mm-hmm. showcase. But do you notice that at all in the things that are covered or the things that you see in the news and the media? I mean, I think, again, maybe it's women evolving or women being more comfortable mm-hmm. being, you know, fine. When you talk finance or business related, you see these women are also there's more business leaders. Women, oh, yeah. You know, you know, so I think. 
the stories, how they're reported or what they're, I don't think, I don't think the actual news stories. Now, if we were to talk about the LGBTQ, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, you know, trans stories, anything like that. Sure. The more that, like intersectional yeah, stories. Right? Yeah. Like, I think there is more that could be done there. Mm -hmm. I think many would agree with that, but I think it's also how easy is it to tell those stories? How comfortable are people, you know, in my case, like when you're in front of a camera again, that's one thing like, well, I want to tell my story, but I don't want to be in front of a camera. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and not that again, this is just a hypothetical. No one's yeah, ever yeah. said this, but I think there's room for growth when it comes to storytelling for sure. But I think the audience, maybe there's more women interested in a lot of the things. Cause I think again, back in the day, it was like, well, the hard news is, you know, finance and business. And, mm -hmm, and now mm -hmm. the men are, or the women are going to check in on the lifestyle and yeah. we're going to have a cooking segment and the fashion and what's right, new yeah, and yeah. where it's not, it's not like that anymore. Mm -hmm. And even you see like, it's, there's still male anchors that are now doing fashion and yeah. fitness. And it's, so it's very, I think it's, that has changed. Good. And I have seen that change because before it was like, okay, like, we're going to have the women go do a fitness segment. Like, well, why can't, you know, we're, yeah. the, and that has changed. I've definitely seen that change. Good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Great to hear. Yeah. So you talked a little bit about, um, the certain gender expectations that mm -hmm. you face, but more specifically, do you feel like there are, there's pressure to conform to like appearance expectations or <laughs> demeanor expectations um, in in the newsroom or like on camera or just mm -hmm. in your role because you're also you know a, a media personality like yeah. out in yeah. the world yeah, yeah. Um, trying to live your life like do you yeah. feel like you have to act oh a certain my gosh. way <laughs> be yeah. on everywhere you go I, I yeah. mean I, okay, I I say this with saying that I'm incredibly grateful for everything that of I course. get to do I'm, yeah. I'm I wouldn't change it for a second. I'm very grateful for all the opportunities that I get to do and, uh, you know, moderating panels yeah. with you on it and, yeah, yeah. and, and emceeing events and game day hosting with Mark for the rider games. Th but yeah, <laughs> you know, if you want to go to a grocery store and not wear a bra and just like, mm -hmm. it's like, I don't, you want to take a picture with me now? Yeah. Like, so, you know, uh, and again, that sounds like such a first world problem, but you're right. It does feel like you have to be on mm -hmm. all the time. And that's mm -hmm. a little draining. It's, you know, it's, I think as I've gotten older and I, you know, I talk about this with a girlfriend who's also still in media, we used to work together years ago and we would, you know, crank out all the work that we did during the day. And then we would go MC or host something at night. And we'd, you know, you're, you're literally, it's like you're on 24 hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there comes a time where all of a sudden it's like, I'm, I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want to yeah. see anyone. And I'm just going to sit here in silence. But then like your friends don't get it or your right. family don't get it. And they're like, why are you like, you're so antisocial or, and it's like, no, I literally think I might be dying inside. Yeah. I just, <laughs> or like to... literally my battery is yeah, just dead. It's strange. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a lot, you know, it's it, but there are still expectations like, you know, you get some strange DMs where mm -hmm. people think that they can say whatever they want to say mm -hmm. to you. And, 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 but again, I think that's the world of social media. It's given easy access to mm -hmm. people. Yeah. There's, and yeah, there's like times even like not that Skylar and I are like media personalities no, at all, but I mean, like we've, you, you know, we've done yeah. things and people yeah. see us and like, sometimes I just like. Um, this is gonna sound weird like there's this expectation that women are always they should be nice yeah you have to be yeah. nice all yes. the time and you have to be kind yeah. all the time yeah. and like yes I absolutely treat people with kindness yeah but like I don't sometimes I'm like I'm not in the mood to like chit chat or be yeah. nice to everyone yeah no <laughs> um, but that that yeah and then like they see you and they're like hey and you're like hey you know, or like, <laughs> or you're just like, I'm, I just like left a screaming toddler yeah. and yeah. like, I have four hours of sleep and like, I'm just trying to like get yeah. the groceries I'm that I need. I'm trying not to cry right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that literally. Yeah. 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 And like the, and then I feel like if like men, men just don't have that same, like, no. they're like, oh, he's just like a cool badass. Like yeah. he's just like, you know, he's aloof or like whatever. I, I don't know. I think it gives off like, I, and I don't, and I 
I hate talking this way because I don't want people to be listening and yeah, be like, yeah. wow, she thinks she's like, but it almost is like, it's almost as glamorous. Like, and my mom said it to me once too. She's like, well, I used to, I used to see Angel, you know, Angel Blair out and I used to get so excited when I saw her and I'd say hi. And I'm like, yeah, it's super cute and super like flattering. Super cute. Yeah. I love that people are still watching and I, I try, you know, I try I'll say hi. And you know, I will. And I, again, like I'm happy to, but there are days where I'm like, I literally don't want to smile right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, that shouldn't be yeah. something that you have to explain yeah. or like someone takes a picture yeah. of you and is like, Sabine was like a bitch to me I earlier today. Had, and I don't, <laughs> Morgan and I frequent Costco a lot. Cause it's right by the station. Oh so yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I was not imagining it. I'm pretty sure she was like secretly trying to take a picture of me while I was trying to eat <coughs> pizza. Oh, and it was just like, and, but that, so that's weird. Like yeah. just come say hi and we'll just, if you want a picture, cool. But then, but then again, this is also the storytelling where yeah. I'm like, oh, she's, she's probably going to take a picture and post it or send it to her friends on like, oh, look how ugly she, whatever, you know, again, of course. My mind. Yeah, yeah. but I think that like, what, that's weird. Like mm -hmm. when I can clearly tell you're like holding and then like I noticed and her partner, whoever he was, was sitting. And so I kind of moved <laughs> and then I think she said something to him. So then he moved the other way. Uh, and then I was like, okay, clearly yes. something weird is happening oh here. My God. So then I just, I was like, I'm gonna play the game. You, I'm stubborn. Yeah. yeah. And so I was like, <laughs> <He's> moving back. <laughs> I see. Yeah, I was like, I see it. I see. And then Morgan came, and I was like, I'm pretty sure that person's trying to take a picture. It's just like that's that's weird. Like, I'd much rather you come just say hi and let's just, like, yeah. And and thank you again. Like, thank you. I. It's very. But I think you are absolutely right. There's that. You know, the whole demure and mindful. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And but like, there are days like I'm tired. I yeah. have no groceries. I'm going to the grocery store. I literally like that's a joke, but like when we had to all wear masks in the grocery store, best time. <laughs> yes, honestly, <laughs> no you, makeup. You just hide, You're like right? Like up. you recognize everyone's like, like bubbled, and you can't. Yeah. Like, yeah. Talk to and like as you it is, recognize right? someone, and you could easily just turn the corner because they weren't. You, you don't know because yeah. half your face is hidden. Yeah. So it's like okay, yeah. yeah, you know. So sometimes it's nice to just. I joke to Morgan and I say it a lot where I'm like, don't talk to anyone. Don't look at anything. Don't just like, yeah, I yeah. just sit at home and everyone at work bugs me. They laugh about it. Cause I just, I, you become an antisocial where I'm like, I just, which then begs the question, how am I going to find my man? But <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other topic. He'll, he'll find you. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. Yeah. On the topic of all like the comments that you get on social media, mm -hmm. a lot of them you said like are mm -hmm. not nice, not kind. Mm -hmm. Is there any support that you receive oh from your, gosh. like what happens? And are you seeing those comments? Like, cause I'm sure you, like, it's a talk within mm -hmm. your, your oh, coworkers. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. are the men getting the same type of comments? Like, what are people commenting about <laughs> well, them about? And no. like, what kind of support do you get? I think you, you know what DMs I'm getting, what mm -hmm. pictures I'm getting. Oh, my yes. Yeah. yeah. So I can confidently say, I don't think my male counterparts are getting them. Okay. Um, are they getting different types of photos though? Like, are, or do so. people I've even never comment. heard like, and, and I, I don't get, I shouldn't say like, I want to say like the good outweighs the bad for oh, sure. There's yeah. so many supportive, wonderful. I just like, I could, I could go on and on about how wonderful people are. They are very supportive, you know, about everything and anything, but you know, the occasional and yeah, like I'm, again, fortunate to have like such a supportive newsroom and, and higher ups that like when stuff like that comes, it's like, take their name. Who was it? We're, you know, like, so it doesn't go unnoticed. It's not like, yeah. haha, like, um, deal with it. Deal. With, yeah. Oh my gosh. It's not. And honestly, I, you know, I've, when you're working at football games, you know, fans can, be interesting to work with too but again they're wonderful like the organization is nothing short of wonderful and supportive and like whatever you need however they want to support you they will and can um and I think I've had that at at all places that I've worked Good. fortunately I think I mean I'm not the first mm -hmm. which is you know yeah. and I won't sadly be the last but there's definitely a lot of us that get interesting messages <laughs> and I mean I used to get racist messages like mm -hmm. tweets and stuff so it's like 
and phone calls that have come in, you know, whoever answers it has always had an answer back to someone who doesn't, you know, prefer to see me on air. So it's, that's nice. Cause that support is there and it's not very much, it's not a, okay, thanks for calling and just hang up and like, doesn't do anything about it. Yeah. There's yeah. like no follow up or no. Support. Yeah. There's been, yeah. Uh, I love who I work with like both like for the riders and with CTV, I'm very lucky. People have your back. Oh my God. I think it's like a family though. Right. Like, yeah. 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 They're kick-ass. Good. Yeah. Good. Good to yeah. hear. Yeah. Do you notice just generally though, like, do people have more to say like the public, um, about women than men online or in, in any way, or is it just, is it pretty dependent on who the person is? I, I mean, I feel like a lot of people don't hesitate to comment or message women. Um, I, I honestly don't really hear men getting messages or comments. I, I mean, maybe they do and they don't say anything, but mm-hmm. I usually, I mean, we're, you talk, you know, about when it, it's I'm like assuming, war yeah. stories, we <laughs> see it. Right? Yeah. 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 And it's not, you know, again, the guys are great at supportive and, you know, like, digging further to be like what's the backstory who is this person <laughs> yeah, like who's yeah. saying mean things or whatever but I think it's more I think it would be more female again it could be different in every newsroom I don't know but from what I've seen it's been mostly like people again I don't know what it is I don't know if they think like it's just women are easy to attack or say things to than men I don't know how many women would send pictures to I don't know I don't know that's weird yeah I think I think (laughs) it's like all of those things combined like women aren't gonna send like you know no no yeah pictures I mean again who knows they do never know yeah we won't generalize (laughs) no like (laughs) yeah and if you do great (laughs) that's wonderful um maybe just if they're solicited don't go unsolicited yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. but yeah I, yeah, I, I think yeah I just think that there's something different about I don't know if it's women are maybe looked at as softer or easier to just reach out and message and say things to versus like mm. I don't know like also like what I mean maybe like is someone gonna message a guy and be like hey like really like the way that suit jacket fit you I don't know yeah I think it's probably also just like a combination of like all of the things that women have been told our entire yeah. lives and like conditioned to yeah. be ashamed of mm-hmm. is like not the things that men have been conditioned yeah. to be ashamed of. Yeah. So it's like, Oh, you like, you know, you gained some weight yeah. or like yeah. you're bloated cause you're on your period. Yeah, that <laughs> like, happens. That's yeah. a thing. Your pants like, are going to look funny on you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like it's like we're conditioned to be ashamed of that yeah. and like try hide it or like apologize for yeah. it. Yeah. And, or even like, your eyebrows look different or like whatever like just like everything yeah that then even as confident as you are if you keep getting those things like it'll oh I I think yeah I think it's it's I don't think it's as easy to just let it slide as people Mm -hmm. you know oh yeah oh ignore it you know you're beautiful it's like well ah (laughs) okay but (laughs) like if all the worst things, you know, it's, I feel like it's a line from friends where it's, yeah. you know, Rachel telling Ross, imagine all the thing, all the bad things you think about yourself and the one person, yeah, you know, thinks them too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now all those insecurities I had about going back on TV, I'm having them. And now you get messages confirming that. Yeah. And I'm like, well, now what? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can't hide. You can't hide. No. You know, and the, these people it's are very hiding. vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah. It's Yeah. I mean, there's always, I think every day I have a moment where I'm like, oh, these pants were a bad idea. <laughs> or, you know, like this shirt, this bra was a bad idea. Like, yeah. bra, like but now it's too late. We're here and I got to. Got to go for it. Yeah. There's, yeah. You're all in. <laughs> you are. Every day. Every day is a struggle. Yeah. That's the one thing. Like, again, that sounds so, I love what I do. But like, when you're not on camera and you could go to work with no makeup on. Uh, yeah, you know, tie your nice. hair back and not have to do your hair. Or, yeah, it's it's something you I take those things for granted. You do mm-hmm. take it for granted. <laughs> yeah. I really yeah. love that about my job right now. Yeah, right. <laughs> and also that no one's like, "Why aren't you wearing makeup today?" Yeah. Like where there's also an expectation that like you're always done. I did do that once on the morning show. I didn't wear makeup. Oh, I was terrified, but I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> And what happened? Did you have any backlash? No. Oh my god. Oh, I know. Good. But then I was like, maybe no one was watching that day. And I, I mean, <laughs> Alex Brown was on. We were working together at the time, and and 
you know, you're under these lights. And I was like, someone's going to say something. Either they noticed and didn't say anything. And they were maybe like, oh, poor girl, she's sick today. I don't know. Which she's is weird because it. no one, like, <laughs> I'm sure someone, yeah, would, be like, someone would have said something. But I, I didn't see anything come through being like, weird. You're looking rough. But I don't think I would do that now. I was going to say, like, what an interesting experiment to run yeah. if you feel. But there was that. I don't know if you ever saw that experiment. I think they were in Australia. A news desk. A, the male anchor wore the exact same blazer every day and not mm-hmm. one comment. And the woman got a comment about what she wore every day. Yeah. yeah. Like, and so I think that is a perfect example. It is. Exactly. Women and like, that doesn't change exactly like women for so long have been objectified right yeah. like we're yeah. we're out there to, yes. for people to look at us yeah. and consider you know they like what they see or they yes. don't yeah and I don't care what kind of tie you're wearing as a no. guy or the no. same old suit with a different I color I probably wouldn't notice no right but as a woman it's like well we have to be fashion forward we yes. have to be fit we have to be yeah. this this and that makeup yeah. on this, yeah. this hair done like fifteen thousand yeah. things to think about yeah, yeah. but I, I not the same expectations yeah. I don't know if the, I don't, but part of me, I'm like, okay, but it's kind of nice to get done up. Yes, of course. But like once, or, you know, like, yeah, you're like, but when I want but, to, but it's also I like, it would be nice to have that choice, oh. right? Like a guy can yeah. like, you know, there's some guys who like don't have to shave for a couple of days, you know, and then right. all of a sudden they've got a little scruff and it's fine. But like, I mean, that doesn't really, but like, oh, I don't want to wear eyeliner or, you know, you, yeah. and then immediately oh, your you hair goes different. like a little bit like yeah. flat, you yeah. know, or whatever. I'm saying, yeah. I, think, I think the makeup is a great point though. Yeah. Like if you decided I'm going to go a week without makeup, see what happens. Yeah. To, like prove a point. There's a story there. Yeah. <laughs> honestly yeah i'm like all right yeah. seriously yeah. like it'll probably unfortunately make national news well, but, that, but i <laughs> like, think i think it's just i i and i feel like social media is where it's because who who would have like written a letter you know back in the 80s or 90s to someone on tv for not wearing like no one would have would they, they have probably called? just would have got fired though well, yeah. like because they have like yeah. you know, so many yeah. rules yeah. on what's allowed to yeah. be seen on tv yeah. and what's yeah. not like that's yeah i mean as sad as it is luckily that's so i mean it's nice now where i'm like i'm gonna chop my hair off and then i was like can i chop my hair off <laughs> am i am i allowed to that, and then i yeah. remember my boss being like i don't like do whatever you want and yeah. i was like what could you could you dye her hair blue like is that allowed like or do you have I mean, to run those types of would, questions but I but mean, if you want to do is that like an option or like how i feel like that's just something i would take into consideration for like you know because it is it's also like even just like how what whether you you know when you're like on social media and you're like my thoughts like all these are my opinions and not of my employer kind of thing but you're still sort of representing yeah yeah right so like no matter where i am i'm always aware of like but also like i have my own brand Mm -hmm. yeah how do i want to be you know so i mean the i think hair is just I personally wouldn't dye my hair blue, but if it was something I maybe would, I think it's just something in cons- to be considerate of like, okay, so I'm, I think I'm having a midlife crisis. <laughs> I'm going to dye my hair red. Yeah. Like, you know, what are yeah. your thoughts? Like, but I just, I think I'm very fortunate that my boss, I think would just be like, <laughs> be like, are you okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> Let's just break this yeah. down for a second. Yeah. Like, like, do you need, do we need to talk further about this? Yeah. But like, I, coming back again it's been different it yeah I don't know if it is being older or what but I just feel like there's a different it's different in in this space than it was before well as you said things have also changed so like yeah. just even just representation across well you see more you know more reporters with nose piercings right that, mm-hmm. you it, that was, 10 years ago that was not a thing like yeah you take your nose ring out when you report and you can put it back in after or, or showing tattoos yeah i was gonna mm-hmm. say tattoos right? even. like huge yeah. you know um i used to hide mine on my wrist for the longest time with a watch and now i'm like it's here <laughs> here like, it is yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean yeah it's not a lot but you see more and more reporters we have you know we have reporters with tattoos and it's mm-hmm. not even i mean i've never heard of the conversation of like cover yourself up even Women, you know, wearing blazers versus sh- bearing your arms. Oh, good you God. Know, that was, yeah. that, but, but shoulders. 20 years ago, wear a yeah. blazer. You always wear a blazer versus now, like, I've been on air with a sleeveless dress and you don't even think twice about it. And no one is saying, Are you going to cover? Are you going to cover up? Right. So yeah. it had, like, I mean, seeing that again, that's like, there is those slow changes, <clears throat> which you did, like, 
I don't even think about because like back then it was always just put on a blazer. You just did you, it. You just yeah. did it. Right? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know where we went with that one. So no, no, very interesting. <laughs> don't wear a blazer if you don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, though, yeah. That's the story. Uh, okay. So to kind of close out our conversation, we want to know what advice you would give to young women starting out in the media industry or just like uh, even advice in general for young women. Don't quit. Oh. I think that's, I think, I mean, I will, I feel, I hope the, you know, the young women that I, you know, get to talk to or have conversations with, I hope they know that I'm their, one of their biggest cheerleaders. And I, I would hope they know who they are that I, you know, I, I chat with them and I encourage them and I give them it. But I mean, having said that, like you, you, you can't just expect things to come to you. Yeah. And I think that's where the don't quit. Like you, 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 you will get critiqued. Yeah. And whether that's in the media world or if it's in any other job, one of the many that I've done, like I used to always be the one that liked getting a paperback with all the red, like, I, don't give me just a grade. I want all the corrections. Feedback. I want yeah. like, where could I fix? What could I have fixed? And I think that has been a big one for me is like, I want the feedback. Like, how could I have presented that differently? How could I have emceed something or what would that you know what would the organizers have wanted more from right. or or less of and i think that helps you grow and and mold yourself into who and what you are in that little piece of magic is you in that mold right, right. and so i think it's always there's been lots of times where i've just been like oh, i'll just sit here and this is it yeah <laughs> this is how i die like this is <laughs> Like this is, I'm just going to sit here and this is, and I think if you don't have that drive and ambition, there's no growth. Yeah. And there's no, like, you don't know what's out there that like you could turn a corner and a completely different world that you didn't even know, know could be for you is there for you. And like, it, I, I talk to little me all the time <laughs> because I think that's like important to like, Sometimes I like have a moment where I'm like, I'm not, you know, I'm not doing anything or, you know, it's, it's, oh, you know, I just, and that's also come from therapy of like, it's not just nothing like yeah. you're doing things and it's very different compared to 20 years ago when you graduate from J school and you had, if someone had said like, you'd be doing all these things, I'd be like, what? <laughs> yeah. I just, want, I just want to write. Yeah. <laughs> like, and so I think it's the don't quit and don't be scared of change and 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 if you don't think you can do it do it and see what happens Ooh. <laughs> like <laughs> love <mic> drop <laughs> because yeah yeah i don't know i think i think often especially as women and girls it's always like follow this certain path and like don't ask questions don't talk back to i mean that's also like a cultural thing though like being south asian right like believe it or not we're women you know again growing up like you talk don't talk so loud to be mm -hmm. you know like mm -hmm. that is Cultural, talk yeah. loud and that's not me you know like i mean i know again when to be respectful and all that course, stuff yeah, but yeah. like but if you're not going to do what your heart is wanting you to do, you're going to have a miserable life and life is long if we're lucky. Yeah. Right. And so chase after whatever the hell it is that you want to do and try new things and don't be scared of trying new things because it'll open a whole world that you didn't even know existed. Beautiful. I love it. Yeah. Just who cares? Yeah, like, yeah. Just do it. <laughs> who cares? <laughs> yeah. like, who cares? Oh man, you just have to love Sabine. I know, she's, she's always so such great. a joy to listen to, to talk to. So much fun. Yeah, so she's real. always so open and just yeah, lovely to talk to. Um, and our community is so lucky to have her and just be such an authentic and talented storyteller and like interviewer and caring about the community in different ways. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Okay, so let's talk about what can be done now and changed mm -hmm. to empower and encourage more women like Sabine who are working at, or considering a career in the media or in the workplace for, for that matter in general. Let's be real. Yeah. <laughs> so number one, what can we do to empower these women to get into this industry or into any industry? We want to create cultures that are inclusive and empowering to women. 
So specifically in the media industry, organizations in those industries need to implement equitable hiring practices and yeah. mentorship programs help increase women representation, that ripple effect. Mm -hmm. They need to ensure, ensure fair pay, of course, by conducting regular salary audits and establishing a transparent compensation policies. They need to create safe environments like sexual harassment runs rampant. Like we talk about totally. these late nights, these, you know, you're always away from your family, those types of things. So what are they, what are their harassment? What are those bullying policies that are in place? Ask about those before <laughs> you get hired or you start somewhere. And make sure there's clear reporting mechanisms to yeah. understand what's been happening. You have a right to ask, to ask those questions. Uh, finally, as we as community of supporters can further empower women in the media by first supporting their voices and creating platforms and opportunities for women to share their stories and perspectives and promoting content created by women journalists, reporters, and media professionals. This is an easy, this is easy as retweeting i don't know what it's called now read xing um, yeah, I, I think it's still called tweeting but it's it? x that's very confusing i don't know why they changed it. Uh, meta like what's the reason for that yeah a man um <laughs> this is okay so this is as easy as retweeting i guess reposting and engaging with the work of women journalists to help increase their visibility and recognition that's a very simple way to support we can also call out harassment when we see it mm -hmm. especially that which is online when you see abusive comments threats or misogynistic attacks report them and speak out in support of the women being targeted if you want to go one step further you can join or support campaigns that advocate for safer digital spaces like hashtag trollbusters or the coalition against online violence which aim to protect women journalists we can also increase media literacy for ourselves and families by teaching children and young people to recognize bias in media portrayals and empower them to demand more diverse and inclusive storytelling. Mm -hmm. I mean, they really just listen to what people want. So if yep. we demand it, hopefully they'll listen. Mm -hmm. And finally, we can support initiatives that create awareness about the challenges women face in the media industry and advocate for the fair portrayal of women in news and media and support media outlets that are actively working to showcase women in empowering and varied roles. CBC. CBC. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is not endorsed, but we no, just but like that I mean, that was a step earlier. So yeah, that's, that's a, a fact. They're the most diverse. Mm -hmm. So by implementing these measures, we can work towards a more equitable media landscape that empowers women and enriches the industry as a whole. Woohoo! We so, did it. We did it. So thank you so much for joining us today as we confronted these terrifying but real life statistics impacting women and girls. And honestly, like us, like we're, yeah. I guess, a part of the media now that we have this podcast even. So oh, yeah. we do, believe it or not, get some interesting comments uh -huh. and we just choose to not really think about them and yeah, we just continue on living our lives yeah so please share this episode rate subscribe wherever you're listening and stay tuned for more ways to make a positive impact together we can make the world a little less scary to be a woman or a girl follow us on instagram at raise her co and at scary stop podcast and on tiktok at raise her co remember that change starts with awareness and action and education thank you for being a part of the scariest community in making this world a little less scary to exist as a woman bye, bye. Thank you.